Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Silverhawk Farm. If you don't know me, my name is Bree, and together with my husband and two sons, we are converting four acres of pasture into a sustainable farm. And today I'm attempting to shoot my first day in the life, which is rough because they traditionally start in the morning, and I'm not a morning person. I'm really not. So I'm gonna do my best, but if I look really tired right now, it's because I'm not a morning person and I'm also not wearing makeup. I don't wear makeup to sleep. Did you know? YouTubers don't wear makeup to sleep. Anyway, so we're gonna go do some morning chores. I got the baby settled with a waffle and some Netflix and we're gonna go feed the animals. So first stop is what we call the front yard chickens. We're gonna have to come up with a different name for them soon because we're moving them to the backyard, but that's our plan. And I have to be a little bit careful when I'm getting these chickens because this rooster, while he has survived many a raccoon fight and he has earned his permanent place on our farm, does tend to get a little bit cranky with me. So I like to give him a little treat every morning to let him know that we're cool. We cool? Oh, you're not gonna show them. He's, he's acting innocent, but half the days he, he wants to bite at my boots. What are you doing, sir? Oh, okay, if I point the camera at you, you stop coming after me. He really hasn't like ever actually hurt me. He just wants to peck at me every day to let me know that he's the boss. Oh girl, why are you broody? It's not time to be broody, it's almost winter. Can you not? We have my crankiest broody. She's the only one that I'm scared to get off the eggs. And she will fight me. So, okay. I have a system where I put the bowl over her head. <laughs> this is, this sounds mean. Look, it sounds mean, but it works. Cause if you get the eggs out from under them, they will get up and go eat. And you don't want to let them brood if you're not going to let them hatch out eggs because they won't get enough nutrients. They won't like get up to eat and drink enough. And like, because the eggs don't hatch out in 21 days cause they, they aren't, you're not letting them. They just sit there. So we gotta break this broody. I'm going in. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I please have an egg? I'm gonna put this over your head. You're not gonna like it. I know, I know, get off the egg. Oh, there you go, there you go. Ha ha. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Aren't they so pretty? Let's get out of here before Rhaegar kicks my butt. I know that people eat mean roosters and honestly, I have gotten rid of mean roosters before. Um, two people who intended to eat them. I just don't, just sounds like a lot of work. Whereas posting free rooster on Craigslist is not a lot of work. All right, so we're back in the goat yard here. And complication number two is that our gate is so jacked up that we have to put, we put this brooder or this, uh, it's like a baby chicken run in front of the gate to keep the chickens from getting out because they were getting out into this walkway area and I was worried the dogs were gonna get at them. So we're gonna have to fix that, I think this weekend. But for right now, I literally just have to push this chicken tractor out of the way every time I wanna get in and out of the gate and it's really, really annoying. If you wanna learn how to make this chicken tractor, I made a video about it, I'll post it down below. Oh, the goats need water. Let me text my husband to turn on the well. We turn our well on from the basement because it's got a leak, so we use the breaker box to turn our well on and off, which is a little unconventional, but it works, it's fine. So I'm going to move this out of the way, hopefully, and then I'm gonna run back to get the food. Hold on, I should... The problem is the ch goats really want to eat the chicken feet, so I need to be careful about that too. If you guys would actually go in the fence today without letting all the chickens out, yesterday they let all the, all the chickens came out when the goats went in. That's the opposite of what we need. Come on in, come on in. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we got all the goats in. If I can keep them in, that would be so handy. Step one, I feed the chickens up on this thing so the goats can't get to it. They really want to, but they can't. And then the chickens can just fly right up. Hello, babies. Hello. Hello. Hello, my love. Yes, I love you. I love you too. We built all of our coops. This one was... This one was an idea. So we, we decided to do an ankle coop in hopes that the goats wouldn't jump on it, which works. Because goats will jump on anything they can. And they can, they can jump really high. The unfortunate thing about the new chickens 
is that they've started roosting in like the corner that they normally used to lay in. So now I have to like move it. I have to like reach through the entire hoop to get the eggs. Maeve, get down. Get down, you don't eat eggs. And then these eggs are just from, I think they might be Rhode Island Reds. The, the woman I got them from didn't know what breed they were, but they're a nice production breed. That worked way better than I thought it would because I actually get to fill our feeder with hay without having the goats run all over me, which never happens. So this is the goat feeder we use. It hangs on the fence. It works really well and they can eat it from other si either side of the fence if it's on the fence like this. So I'm gonna fill it from this side, they'll be able to eat it through the fence. Bring those, these eggs in and get some coffee started because I am sleepy. So this is my morning coffee routine. It's not very homesteady, but as a YouTuber, it's very helpful because I do spend a lot of time at the computer editing. Ooh, that's good. Hold on, I'm taking a moment to just enjoy the coffee and not talk. This is very hot coffee. It's especially hot today, I love that. Especially since it's just a little bit chilly, you know? Normally, on a day like today, I take some time to like either plan things or sort of relax. One of the things that I've learned since like starting to stay at home is that my schedule doesn't have to be determined by business hours. And I end up working so much in the evenings and things that I have taken time to take a break in the morning. And so far as I can, my husband is working, so I still have point on both of our children. Hi, baby. It's kisses time. This is my favorite time. The time in the morning when I have coffee and kisses. Yes. We're recording kisses time. I hope you don't mind. I love you too. So like I was saying, I have learned to take a little bit of break in the morning and let myself do whatever I want. So I was gonna do some editing this morning while I was talking to y'all, but I actually finished my editing last night. It's why I'm a little extra tired. I stayed up until like midnight finishing um, the apple cider donuts video and getting it posted and scheduled. And it actually came out about an hour ago because I schedule them usually the previous day. So today I'm gonna be playing some Sims and I'm just gonna take a little break and then we'll get some breakfast here in a bit. So this is kind of my ideal setup when I'm in gamer mode, which I am in a lot of the time. I really enjoy a situation where I can have The Sims on one monitor and YouTube or Twitch on the other monitor and I kind of have pay attention to both things. And for some reason, I find it the most soothing thing in the world. So I'm actually having my second cup of coffee. Should I drink two cups of coffee a day? Probably not, but I do. And I got my delicious apple cider donut um, that I made a video about yesterday. I think that'll be a few days ago for you all. And I would highly recommend that you make these donuts. I probably say this about everything I make, but like, they're really good. I hadn't tried this recipe before and they're really good. So I'm not really much of a breakfast person, but I started a new medication recently that I really should be eating breakfast with and I should be taking first thing in the morning. Clearly this is not first thing in the morning for me, but you do what you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat this donut up and then we'll be taking some meds. So I've got some food in my belly, finally, and I've got my children settled and I'm going to take my medication for the day and just talk a little bit about what I'm taking and why. I might get some flack for this because I know that the homesteading community, first off, I know that there are problems with our medical system and with Big Pharma. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not going to negate that. I'm also not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and suffer because I'm refusing to take what treatment is available to me. So the first thing I'm taking is actually just a supplement. I take it for PCOS and it's 
meant to help regulate hormones. PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome. 10% of people who have ovaries have PCOS, so it's actually extremely common. It can lead to fertility problems, pain, issues with irregular periods. So many annoying things. So many annoying things about PCOS, and uh, not enough people are talking about it, so here I am. This was not a prescribed thing. I just kind of Googled what supplements might help, and then I looked at some like actual studies from like .edu type of situations to confirm that it's actually something that might help and I've been taking it probably a few months and I feel like it's helping with a lot of my symptoms. I will note that this is a folate and vitamin D blend and one of my um, prescriber people, my psychiatrist, did recommend that I have my doctor track my vitamin D levels because too high of vitamin D levels can actually create a lot of health problems as well. So if you choose to try out the supplement and this applies to you, make sure your doctor is monitoring your vitamin D levels and that you always take medication under the advisement of a healthcare professional, which YouTubers aren't. Oh yeah, also this is four giant horse pills a day. I'm not a fan of taking these. If they didn't work, I would drop them, but they're working, so hey. Um, and then I have just an allergy pill. I take like a the regular daily allergy and then I have a heartburn medication that I take daily as well. The baby's fine, that's the noise he makes when he's happy. He makes a very similar noise when he's happy and when he's sad, and here's the one I'm probably gonna get, get the most hate for. This is so loft. This is my new antidepressant. I started it four weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, not very long at all, and I take it for anxiety and depression. I would say my anxiety symptoms are much more debilitating than my depression, and while adjusting to it took a couple of weeks of like feeling really groggy and sleepy, now that I'm adjusted to it, it's working really well. It's working wonders for my anxiety symptoms, particularly things that are like central nervous system related because anxiety can really affect your central nervous system and make it oversensitive. So I'm finding for the first time that I'm not getting like racing heart, shortness of breath, like aching muscles. There are so many physical symptoms that um, this antidepressant has relieved. So I know that a lot of people have strong feelings about taking antidepressants or anything that's gonna affect your brain chemistry. I personally hope to someday live in a world where it is as normal to take an antidepressant for depression as it is to take insulin for diabetes because it can be just as life-saving. And if you're a depressed person or a person who takes medication or thinks that they may need to take medication, know that that doesn't make you less of a homesteader, less of a farmer, or any less of an awesome person, and I am with you. One thing I'm hoping to add to my arsenal soon is ADHD medication. I actually was diagnosed with ADHD at the same time that I was prescribed this Zoloft, and my provider understandably wanted to treat my anxiety symptoms first. I'm hoping to start ADHD medication now that I'm stable on an antidepressant. So I'm going to finish my coffee quick and then we're going to be doing some working in the kitchen today. I'm gonna be running to Just Food, which is my local food pantry to drop off some eggs, but I need to wash them first and some of them are pretty muddy, so that's gonna be a process. My oldest son is just waking up and needs to get started on his homeschool work and so the system we have for that right now, I think is kinda cool, is this thing. It's a big felt board with Velcro things on the back so we can move things around and I can make new ones of these as I need to. This is just laminated paper. And so I haven't, this is not accurate to like what we've been doing this week. I didn't set it up at the beginning of the week like I normally do. So I'm gonna get it set up for today so he knows what to expect. My son very graciously scattered everything all over the ground. The younger one, not the older one. So we're gonna pick up a few of these things that we need. So we do every day, we do Beast Academy, which is our math curriculum. Night Zookeeper is our Eng English curriculum. Both of those are like online, kind of gamified, which I think works really well for most kids, honestly, but kids who love games can be especially helpful for. Um, we're gonna have him read some lit books. Right now I'm having him read A Wrinkle in Time. And then some science books, which I just have like a group of science books that I picked up at the beginning of the year and he'll get to pick which one he wants to read. So that's our plan for today. And then we do Duolingo Spanish every day as well. So I put these things on the board and then he can actually rearrange them as he wants. He can add in breaks just as long as he gets it done in the day. It's whatever he wants. All right, friends, we are at the point of the day that I've most been dreading, which is the time that I wash my enormous backlog of eggs. We want to make sure that absolutely none of the eggs have gone off. We use like a first in first out system where we're always eating our oldest eggs. But just in the off chance that any of them have gone off or a carton got mixed up somewhere, I'm going to go ahead and have them all pass the float test. So all that means 
means is I have this big old container full of water. I have problems with the side of the sink, otherwise I would just plug it and use that. So I'm basically just going to put eggs in here to verify their freshness. If they go all the way to the bottom, they're fresh. If they start to stand up a little bit, they're still totally good to eat, but they're a little less fresh. If they float, you do not want to eat them. So I'm basically going to be putting everything in. If we grab any floaters, I'm going to be disposing of those very carefully. And then I'll get everything else really nicely washed off and packaged up so that we can bring it over to the food bank. Hopefully kind of quickly because they're closing at six. I do use paper towels when I'm doing this and some of the eggs are like muddy and kind of icky looking, which is just kind of the reality of being on a farm. So it's cool. Okay. Nobody's floating yet. Yeah, looking nice and fresh. No problem, no problem. Some of these, okay, and this doesn't surprise me at all because these are the ones I'm currently eating. And some of these are like, just standing up a tiny bit. And they're totally safe to eat. And will be safe to store. Like most of the eggs that you're buying at the grocery store are not fresh. Like they, most of the eggs at the grocery store are like a month old, if not more. Oh my goodness. I meant to show this off on Instagram, but I forgot to get a picture of it. But look at this little fairy egg. Okay, so this is the fairy egg. This is a normal sized egg from the same breed, same size chicken. Same age. A lot of the time you'll get fairy eggs when they first start laying. I'm not surprised that this floated because it's gonna be, it's probably not got the yolk to weigh it down. So while it's probably still safe to eat, I am gonna set it aside, but look how cute. So those are really common when, it, when chickens start, first start laying, but actually the hen that laid that is like well over a year old. So sometimes it just randomly happens. It's kind of funny. All right, so far nobody's floating. So we're gonna get these rinsed and packaged up. And I literally just brush off the egg really gently, making sure that any bits and pieces and dirt and poop or whatever gets off. All right, so I got those eggs dropped off at the food bank. It was 10 dozen eggs total, and so I'm really happy with that. The guy at the food bank said that my eggs were beautiful, which is like the nicest thing that you can say to me. And I am now finishing up my errands. I grabbed some meat from the local butcher. I was planning on making smash burgers, and I might still, but they did have some really good like stir fry beef, and I was thinking about doing some like Philly cheesesteak type of sandwiches. So I am probably gonna get ingredients for both and see what we decide to do. Either way, I'm gonna be cooking on my beautiful Blackstone grill, so I'm excited for that. And then I also have some library books to return. I accidentally drove past where I was supposed to drop it off at the library, so I'm gonna have to find a stop somewhere from here to home, but that shouldn't be hard to do. All right, come on, puppers. Yes, you need to come inside. Hi, Nymeria. Hello, sweet girl. You gonna let me do this with a, oh, you're muddy. Haha, you can't reach me. I'm excited to see you too. Can I get you off your leash? So as you saw, the first step to getting the goats put up in the evening is getting the dogs put up in the evening, just for a little bit while I get the goats up because they try to help and it scares the goats and then they don't wanna come into the barn. All right, and we have the water running because I forgot to fill the inside water today, but they've had water in the field all day. Or they had had water in the field until they kicked it over, you silly animals. Looks like we're filling a lot of water, but I've just got a spigot and this mess of weeds. We've got some very impatient animals waiting on us. This is doing its job though. That is a noise. You guys are making new weird noises. Do you need a boyfriend? We're working on it. They're very angry that they can't get out of the fence because for the last long while they have been able to break through the fence and destroy it. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to spray you chickens, sorry. I didn't know you had full water this morning. Look at this pretty boy. Isn't he gorgeous? What are you doing, Maeve? Maeve's been kind of a cranky one. She's the brown one. 
I'm gonna carry this water over while the goats duke it out. Normally they'd be jumping all over me while I do this, so um, I think they're mad that they're not able to do their, their tradition. What is that noise, y'all? Oh yeah, Maeve's in heat something fierce. They need boyfriends. That's what they need. Come on. All right, ladies. They're making sure all of the all of the leaves that fell since this morning are getting cleaned up. Very diligent about cleaning up those fall leaves. They have been loving sunflower seeds as a snack lately. I usually gave them alfalfa pellets, which I still give them some, but ever since I started giving giving them sunflower seeds, their coats have been so much shinier and healthier. You got to see what this is what happens every time I try and record them. Is they just climb me? Yesterday while recording, Maeve headbutted the camera while I was shooting. It's not helpful, but it was funny. And we'll make a good Instagram reel. Good night, sweet girls. And that's the goats done. Let's go get some dinner ready. All right, I'm just stepping into the garden for a moment because while I don't always like to have tomatoes on my burgers, I'm feeling like nostalgic about the end of season tomatoes. And I was hoping that a slicer would be ready, yes. This raspberry liana plant has been my one true love this season. I love it so much. And they make like fairly small tomatoes, but mine is produced like madness. And honestly, I like that I don't have to wait forever for it to be ripe, you know? Cause the really big ones, as much as I love them, they can take a while to ripen. This'll totally do it for getting some things for my burgers. I'm just doing another look around. Next week is gonna be our first frost. So I'm gonna need to pick some peppers and things, but I think that's gonna be tomorrow. I was hoping to start a fermentation. Oh no, there's a leak in my irrigation. So I'm going to avoid that with the camera and uh, patch that a different time. I was hoping to do a fermentation video of some peppers, but I don't think I'm gonna have time today. And that's fine, because I've been doing a lot of recording and I'm getting back into the swing of things after taking a little break. So it's all very good. Our cat Neville is an indoor only cat, but he comes to hang out with me while I'm grilling. Hey buddy, can you come say hello? Why don't you bite me? He's good. So dinner is finally done, even though it is very dark and I had to record using my phone flashlight, but this glorious, glorious burger, I thought about making a side, but um, it's kind of big. So I'm just gonna see if I'm still hungry afterwards and maybe grab a snack, especially on a day that's been a little bit busy like today. I don't really stress about making like a perfect three course meal at the end of the day. And I put tomatoes on the burger. Uh, so I'm gonna devour this and then probably get to getting the kids to sleep so I can relax for 30 seconds before bed. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Thank you for the kisses. All right, sweet people. It has been a day and it is time to get this silly little love bug to bed. It is my night to do so. We do switch off every night because it is quite the chore. This three-year-old still needs to be rocked to bed but I appreciate everyone who watched for this long. I know it's been, I assume, probably a little bit of a long video, and I so appreciate you hanging out with me and keeping me company while I run some errands today. <laughs> and while they don't like to be filmed, I will acknowledge that my husband has been doing stuff behind the scenes all day, taking care of the kids while I run errands and getting the living room cleaned up and all of the things. So while you didn't see it, that definitely happened. So I'm not doing any of this alone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. <laughs> I hope to see you really soon. And in the meantime, treat yourself to something delicious.